Thanks so much, Reverend Gurley, and good to see all of you all who are on tonight for the expectation moment. <clears throat> it is a Friday night. It is warm. Uh, that's the thing about Atlanta weather. It can um, it can be hot, cold one day and hot the next day. So you just if you don't like it, just wait a day, and it'll be right where you want it to be. So we're grateful tonight to have everyone on the line. Before I get started, I want to remind everyone <clears throat> who can to do two things. First of all, tomorrow at eleven o'clock, we'll be doing our um, our toys for tots and our coat giveaway tomorrow at the church. And so two things. First of all, if you can come help, come help. Um, seems like the weather be nice. Let me do a weather check right quick. Seems like we'll have good weather tomorrow. No, we won't. It'll be raining, but we're going to be inside. <laughs> so uh, if you can, come on tomorrow and um, and join us. And if you got coats to bring, whether, you know, we're looking for a chill scope, if you got adult coats, bring them as well. Uh, we want to make sure that those who don't have, we can provide we can provide for them uh, for this uh, for their families. All right. Okay. All right. So we're grateful tonight for those part of St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church who are going to participate. Um, even if you drop your coat off, call somebody and tell somebody to come get your coat, bring it over there, or bring something if you want to uh, donate to the to the um, to St. Peter uh, Ministry, St. Peter Ministries. Mission ministry. Tonight we're going to take up a, 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 what I think is a key verse, a key verse for the Christmas season. It's key because what it does is it allows us to um, have something, to know something, and to be able to operate in something that all of us need. Let me say it again. So it's good to have it, and then it's good to know it, but then it's good to operate in some truths. And tonight, if you would join me in the book of Luke, chapter two, we're going to talk about some biblical truths. So we're going to touch. Um, whoever operating the phone line, let's get some mute going over here. Whoever's on the phone line, if you mute yourself, we'd be mighty grateful. Thank you. Okay, so tonight we're in the book of Luke, and we've all read this scripture before. We've all read these verses before. We've all um, seen it, and, and hopefully we've been excited about it because this is what I would call the seminal verse, the the, the, the verse that um, most equ uh, equates and calls us to understand the beauty of that night um, that Jesus was born. We talked about some reasons why we should celebrate. We talked about the fact that Jesus came to save sinners, and we, we talked about the fact that Jesus uh, came to bring light into the world. We talked about the fact that Jesus came to uh, in, in a way to be like us so that he could save us from our, our, car, our fleshly sins. We talked about these three things tonight. Uh, I want us to look at it in, in its total context. And so when you look at tonight in this Luke chapter two, I want us to kind of imagine uh, years and years ago, Mother uh, Phelps, Mother Phelps told me years ago, I'll never forget it, that, that, that there were times in the Mothers and Ministry of St. Peter and other groups that she works with, other churches she'd been a part of, um, in, in, in preparation for um, communion. There was a sacredness, a, a quietness, and there would be a reflection on what Jesus did in order that we could could have life, and what Jesus did in order that we could celebrate this communion, be obedient to his commands. Uh, there'll be a silence, there'll be a sacredness, there'll be a reflection. And what I want to give tonight, I want us to, after class is over, after we talk to class, and after we've gotten ready to go to bed, for all of us to pause just a few minutes and think about uh, this wonderful night um, that took place to change our lives and change the world. Uh, I'm going to read the entirety of the chapter, but I want to focus basically on verses 10 through 10 through 15 in the book of Luke chapter 2. So I'm going to read it beginning at verse 1. So the Bible says, it came to pass in those days that there went a decree uh, from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Um, and, and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. So Cyrenius <clears throat> had asked for a tax. The purpose of tax, of course, was to get government money for the government. And so... Um, the Serenius had had made the text, but it was executed under Caesar Augustus. And the, the point of the text was everyone had to return to their own city, their home city, in order to be taxed. That was for um, administrative reasons. And so verse 3 says, now I want to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And verse 4 says, <clears throat> and Joseph also went up from Galilee. He went out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was a house of lineage of David, because he was a spouse to be married to Mary, um, the, his, the household, Mary in this case, and then and the baby that was to come, Jesus, um, left Nazareth 
into Judea, into the city of David. They went left Nazareth through Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. That's where they went, because that's where David uh, uh, Joseph will be taxed. And verse 5 lets us know that to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. So her pregnancy uh, was imminent to be fulfilled. Her, the baby was on the way, well on the way. And so that's what is established in verse 5. She was great with child. In verse 6, and here's where I want to start focusing. And so it was <clears throat> that while they were there in Bethlehem, Judea, that the days were accomplished that she should be delivered, that her that her pregnancy came to full term. And verse 7 tells us what happened. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in his swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger because there was no room for them in the end. Uh, in this city of Bethlehem, Judea, perhaps would be, perhaps would be because of the fact that so many uh, people were coming uh, into Bethlehem to be taxed. Perhaps the, the population of Bethlehem was large. Perhaps um, it was because of the fact that so many people um, were staying in hotels because they did not live there anymore. Perhaps uh, it was just it was just inconvenient. But whatever the case was, Jesus was born uh, and wrapped in swaddling clothes. And he was laid in a manger. Just to give you the picture of the manger, uh, Jesus, the Savior of the world, was born in a barn. But it wasn't a barn like we think of it. It was really a cave where animals were kept. Um, this cave was where animals um, mooed and goats um, made the goat sound and all of the lambs bawled, everything that was d d going on. All of these animals uh, were doing it around where our Savior was born because there was no room for him and better accommodations. Now, here's where it gets good. <clears throat> and all, as Jesus was being born, simultaneously, as Jesus was coming into this world, as Jesus, who had already laid aside his glory, who had put on the form of a servant, the flesh flesh that he put on to come into this world. At the same time that that was happening, verse 8 says, and they were in the same country, they were in the same area, the same region, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. So these shepherds, and I want you to close your eyes for a minute because I want to talk about this for a minute. These shepherds um, were, were, were working. They were on the job. They were their, their job was 24-7, and even at night, they never got a chance to sleep. Even though uh, the sheep could lay down, they couldn't lay down, but they were at work. And just as a background, the shepherds were not highly thought of. They were not um, known as dependable. They were not easily brought into society. They didn't, people didn't want to come, shepherds come around because shepherds smelled like sheep, quite frankly. They were not highly esteemed in the community, but they were necessary, but they were not looked upon with great respect. Here they were, though. In the, ship, in, the, in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night while Jesus was being born. Now, it's important to note this. It's important to note this. All of the Pharisees and all of the, the scribes, all those who were experts in the law, were not aware of what was taking place. They had read the law. They knew that the Savior was promised. But yet, Jesus was being born right in their midst, and they had no concept, no idea of his coming into the world. All right? That's what's happening. But the shepherds. Those of low esteem were working in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. But look what happens to these shepherds. Verse 9 says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. The angel of the Lord came upon them. As they were in the darkness, there was no flashlights, and they may have had little lamps, so they were in the dark, making sure that their sheep were safe. But in the middle of that, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And if you can imagine this angel, this angelic being has come now with the light that comes from having come from heaven. This angelic being comes, but the angel didn't come just in its own light. The Bible says, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. So the angel came with his natural light coming from heaven. But more than that, a heavenly light accompanied that angel and shone round about them. It was like somebody turned the lights on in the fields while they were keeping watch over their flock by night. Why do you why was it why was why do I think it was so impressive? Because the Bible says next that they were so afraid. These men who were used to working in the dark now have found themselves in a bright light. These men who were used to working in the isolated sense now have come and have had actually heaven um, visit them in the fields. These men who were not used to any kind of accolades now have been visited by an angelic being. And that and the God's presence, the Lord's presence, the glory, the weight, the heaviness, the, 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 the shine, the, 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 the light of the Lord shone round about them. And naturally, they were very afraid. But their fear didn't last long. I want you to listen to this. Their fear didn't last long. Why? Because verse 10 says, and the angel being aware because that angel was on a divine mission from God, was aware. And I can imagine as God dispatched the angel, he told the angel, listen, 
they're going to be afraid at first. So put them at ease so they won't miss the message. Uh, put them at ease so they won't miss what I'm trying to say, what I bring to them. And I want to stop there. It's not on the lesson tonight, but I want us to understand the necessity of the child of God um, hearing what God is saying and understanding that God does not want to be afraid. There are many of us in the church today who are missing out on what God has for us. We're missing out on what God has made available to us because there's fear. Fear is a great blocker of the reception of God's blessings. Fear is a great blocker of hearing what God is trying to say to us. And so let us pray constantly that God will remove fear that we can hear what he's trying to say. Some of us have doubts about our future or doubts about our prayer, prayers being answered because we are afraid. We have put things in a time capsule or time clock or we put things in a human um, capacity, not understanding that God works well outside of what we're able to do. I'm sure these sheep, these shepherds weren't aware and weren't, what wasn't expecting what happened. And so the angel came to calm them down and said, listen, don't be afraid. Verse 10, fear not. Don't be afraid first, but really don't be afraid because what I'm about to tell you um, will bring you great joy. Let me stop there. Jesus, our savior, has come into the world for the purpose of bringing not just joy, but great joy. I want somebody to say that to yourself, great joy. When we celebrate Christmas, there should be no depression and disappointment. There should be no, um, that, that should be no overwhelming doubts and fears. There should be no overwhelming disconnection from, from things. We should understand that this, even if, even if your family don't get it, you got to get it. You got to understand that Jesus came to the world for great joy. And really, it is offensive for the child of God not to celebrate the great joy that has come by way of Jesus' interest into the world. The, this, this angel said it. I bring you good titus. Here's really what it says, if I can translate it. He says, I'm bringing you a good sermon of great joy. This sermon, he says, I'm telling you, is great joy, not because of the words I say, the angel said, because of the truth I'm giving. He says, I'm bringing you great joy. And this great joy, look at verse 10, is not for just you guys here in the fields. It's not just for you folk uh, that, that have good positions and authority. It's not just for you folk who have money to buy gifts. It's for everyone. Look what he says. This great, this message of great joy shall be to all people. One of the things I think that, that many people have as a result of the of fear uh, in our lives is maybe that's not for me, or maybe I'm not worthy of that, or maybe I'm not deserving of that. But what this angel said was that this message of great joy uh, was for everyone, and it was for all people, despite their backgrounds, despite what they had done, being this message of joy was available, made available to all people. It was accessible to all people. Now let's look at this, ne this next one. Here's the message. For to, uh, to, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. For unto you is born this day, right now, in Bethlehem, a Savior. I want to stop there. There have been many articles, and I read a lot of newspaper articles and articles and news and all that kind of stuff. And every commentator, almost every writer, whether it's the U.S. News and USA Today and the Washington Post and AJC, has a prediction on what the world needs. The world needs more taxes. Somebody might say, no, the world needs less taxes. The more the world needs more houses. More, we need less houses. We need more people. No, we need less people. We need more of, 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 of jobs. We need less jobs. Well, here's the truth. What the world needed then, what the world has always needed, and the, what the world needs now is a savior, someone who can deliver us from our sin and deliver us from death and live and deliver us from the disappointments that come with the knowledge of what sin can do to our lives. The, the angel said this, this day is until you're born in the city of David, a savior. Jesus came to bring joy. But Jesus also came as a savior to bring salvation unto the world. That's what the angel said. He said, and this Jesus is coming, is Christ the Lord. Why did the angel say that? The angel said that because he wanted them to understand that this was not some pop-up savior. He wanted them to know that this was a savior that had been discussed by Isaiah. This was a savior that had been proclaimed by David, even in, in his Psalms. This was a savior that had been proclaimed by Ezekiel and Jeremiah and, 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 and Malachi and Zechariah and Nahum and Rebekah. He wanted them to know that this savior is the one really for whom you are waiting on. That's why he said he is Christ, uh, the anointed one, the one who has sent the Lord, that he has sent 
um, for this special purpose of providing joy and providing salvation. Let me go one more verse. And then he says, and this shall be a sign to you. He says, I want you to be able to identify him. He shall, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And this is the part I like, verse, verse 13. And suddenly there was with the angel. The angel came alone, but the angel had some backup. The angel came by himself to make this message because I believe that if the angel had come and the whole heavenly choir had come, it would have overwhelmed the shepherds. But he came to give the message. He came to tell them not to be afraid. He came to tell them that he had a message of great joy. He came to tell them that there was a savior that was here now. But then the angels came. The angel, angelic choir came. And the Bible says this right here. That was with the angels, a multitude. In other words, even if the shepherds had tried to count the number of angels that were singing along with the angel who had come, they could not have counted them because there were so many. He says, a multitude of the heavenly hosts. What did they come to do? They came to praise God and they came to, to reinforce and clarify and, and magnify the message that the angel had come. Let me see what they did. First of all, they praised God. One of the things I think that we must do daily is to praise God for the fact that he has given us a saving Jesus point blank period every day sometimes you might say well, i don't have to praise god for well we do have one thing to praise god for if your money is funny and gone if you don't have a job if you are in the sickness on your body whatever it is we still have a reason to praise god because he alone has given us a savior john 3 16 said if for god so loved the world not that the world so loved God or not that the world so deserved this blessing, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Here's what the angel said. The angel, the choir said, the heavenly choir said, they praised God first. And then they declared this. Look what they said. Glory to God in the highest. That's a worship portion there. They praised God, but then they worshiped God. They said, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The third thing that Jesus brings, he brings joy. He brings salvation and he brings peace. Here's what this word says. This, this verse says, and if I can um, translate it, it says, and let that be in there. And because of him, there'll be peace on earth and then men will have goodwill toward one another. There was always a level of hostility. When we look at the Old Testament, I remember thinking this as a child. It seemed like in the Old Testament, they were always fighting. It was the Philistines versus the Israelites. It was the Israelites versus the Am 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 Amicalites. It was the Amicalites versus the, the Ethiopians. It was the Ethiopians. It was always a battle going on in the Old Testament. But through the coming of Jesus, there exists a capacity for mankind to love one another. It is not in mankind, but it comes from God for those who will receive the Savior, those who will experience the joy of the Lord. In that relationship, and because God has given us a Savior who brings great joy, there exists now the capacity for mankind to have peace with one another through the peace that God has given through Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, we understand, and I think Paul put it clearly, those who keep, uh, those, those uh, we have peace to pass our standard, but we have peace and we keep our minds stayed on the Lord. Isaiah and, 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 uh, and uh, Paul connected to make that point plain. The peace that we have doesn't come from our focusing on ourselves or our stuff. It comes from focusing on the Lord. And in doing so, we have a level of peace. But that peace would never have come had there not been a Jesus. Peace was never in the equation of mankind, a peace that, that, that caused people to not understand why they could get along with somebody they never got along with before. There was no concept of peace uh, that, that exists in the world in the way it is that, that through the revelation of Jesus Christ, God revealed peace that mankind could have through Jesus Christ. And so as we have this Christmas season, uh, that is one of the reasons why years ago, I used to watch this, um, every year, matter of fact, I used to watch um, a Catholic service about 12 o'clock at night on Saturday night. And um, I mean, I'm sorry, the night, but Christmas Eve. I don't know why I said Saturday, it was Christmas Eve. But um, on Christmas Eve, and I would always be very excited about the prayers that went forth and the, the words that were declared. And the, it was almost as if the priest was asking, in this moment, let us uh, put away our swords, let us put away our battles, let there be a ceasefire in all the world. But I want to add something there because God didn't call for a ceasefire. He called for mankind through Jesus Christ to be able to have love and to love one another. And here's the thing I want us to understand so we won't be confused and come up short. God is not asking peace to start with that other person. God is asking peace to start with us. 
God is saying to us through Jesus Christ, who I'm giving you to save you from your sin through Jesus Christ, who I'm giving you that you may have light in the world of darkness through Jesus Christ, who I gave you, who could die in his flesh because he came in the flesh, just like you to take away your sins through Jesus Christ, who I'm giving you that you may have joy, who, who I'm giving you as a savior. God is saying that through him, you can operate in peace. And that means if you do it and somebody else does it, then there will be peace. There's this in, in, in our context this night and in the days to come as we celebrate Christmas. Let us understand that the magnificent and the magnitude of Jesus' interest into the world brought things in that would have, had never been available to your average person before. Salvation, joy, and peace. And let us pray on these things. Let us ask God for these things and let us ask God that we can experience these things and finally let us God let us ask God to let us manifest these things in our lives let us be peaceful let us have the joy of the Lord that not only we feel but others can see let us stand firmly in the salvation of the Lord and let us stand firmly in such a way that we can share the salvation of the Lord with the world I stop here tonight at about 7.23. I thank God for each of you tonight for tuning in. And I do pray that each message we study in regard to why uh, we should celebrate Christmas becomes clearer and clearer for us, that we will understand that this season is not a season for disconnection, but it's a season for connection, if with nobody else, a season to be connected with the Lord. Before I close, I want to remind us one more thing tonight. Tomorrow morning, um, in addition to having our giveaway, uh, we will have our men's ministry class, Men Living in Victory. Now, why am I saying this tonight? Well, here's why. I'm challenging. I'm beseeching. I'm begging that as we come into this new year, that the men that are part of St. Peter, now listen to this description, and the men who are connected with St. Peter. In other words, there may be a man who's not a member of St. Peter, but he might be somebody's grandson, might be somebody's great-grandson, might be somebody's nephew, cousin, son-in-law, whatever. I'm and challenging us to encourage them to participate in our men's Bible study, um, Living in Victory. Um, we, we talk about all the things that's happening in the world today in regards to black men particularly. Um, and we all, we, we wail about it. We, 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 we are sad about it. But I want us to know that God didn't call any of us to live in, in defeat. And he particularly has called Christians to live in victory. And we wanted this part of this lesson tomorrow and in January and February and to go throughout 2022 is for us to learn how to live in victory. And I'm learning too. So it ain't just me teaching. I'm learning uh, as God gives. And so it, tomorrow at 11 o'clock, and Sister Simpson, if you don't hear, remind me, where, how are we doing it tomorrow? I can't remember. So I need your help. Miss Simpson, not on here. I thought I saw her. Are we doing this virtual? Are we doing this in person? I can't remember. Dean Thomas, you in remember? Person. In we person. We're doing it in person. All right, we're going to be in the sanctuary? In yeah. the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. Okay, all right. I'm glad you said that. God, I've been sitting at home uh, looking at the computer. Nobody been there. <laughs> and tomorrow, it's 11 o'clock in the sanctuary. We'll be doing our, our men living in victory. So come, join us. We're not going to be long. We're going to hold y'all day. We're going to get started, and we're going to get good, and we're going to get gone. And so if you can tomorrow, join us tomorrow and have men. Send somebody. Send somebody. We're going to welcome them like St. Peter welcomes folk. But we want to kind of get warmed up for this new year. I love each of you. Let us close in prayer tonight. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just say thank you again for the breath of love that you show us. Thank you again for the depth of love you show us. Thank you, Lord, for the consistency and the eternal nature of love that you've given us through Jesus Christ. I do pray again, Lord, that through as we study your word, that our focus will begin to focus now more on Christ as we celebrate Christmas. I pray, God, tonight that you bless households, individual Christians, and I pray, God, that you bless families, that as we learn this word and share this word, Lord, that our hearts and minds will be stayed and fixed on you. I pray, God, that as we study your word and the fact that we know now that Jesus came, that we may have peace, a savior, and joy, that, that we will be better equipped to serve you, that our hands and feet will be strengthened, that our hearts will be strengthened, that we may be strengthened our inner man, that our ears will be filled with the joy of the knowledge, and that we can picture, Lord, this reality of this, this the angels and the angelic being declaring this to the world, and we can hear it, this song in our playlist is in our head. I pray, God, that your word, um, these words will get in our minds so that we would have peace, 
that surpasses all understanding. And I pray, God, that your word will get in our minds that even as this season unrolls and, and unfolds and the world tries to give us reasons not to be uh, uh, joyful, that the fiery darts of Satan will be quenched. I pray, God, tonight that in this season that your word will get on our lips, our tongues, our vocals, our lungs, and our throats, that we can declare to a dying world why Jesus came. We can tell each other and, re and remind each other why Jesus came. And in our own quiet moments, we can celebrate why Jesus came this season. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. God bless you, St. Oh, Peter. Hold on.